believe it is. And then, um, and then I have a film uh, that I'm. Uh, well, wait a minute, that one ain't announced. But I've got a film to do, and then uh, I've got a show that I'm going to be doing in Branson, Missouri, and um, can't really give too many details on it right now either. But um, we're. Uh, it looks like we're going to be at uh, at the old Tony Orlando Theater there. And uh, it's going to be a wonderful show. It's, it's a show that I dreamed up years ago and been wanting to do it for, for years. And uh, so we got that. And then, and then I've always wanted to do a movie of my own where I could control everything yeah. <laughs> as far as creation is concerned. Yeah. So, so I dreamed of these two old men going all the way down to Mississippi from the Ohio River all the way down the Mississippi to New Orleans. And so I bought a 42-foot twin-engine boat that's half-inch steel hull with a big bow and everything, and it's a houseboat. Uh, it was uh, one of 300 hulls supposed to go to Vietnam as a gunship. They decided not to send them to Vietnam, so they sold them to a houseboat manufacturer that turned them into houseboats, and they're called River Queens. Well, I got a River Queen in wonderful condition. We got it redone inside to be like the old man and everything. And we think that the movie, one of the things that's going to sell the movie is that 70% of our shots are going to be by drone. Oh, wow. And yeah, so it's going to be drone shots of the river that nobody's ever seen. And um, these uh, one, one old man's got dementia. That's me. Mm-hmm. And, he, and his younger buddy wants to go along because he don't think with my dementia that I'll make it all the way to New Orleans. And then, um, well, later on in the movie, then you find out the younger guy has just been diagnosed with cancer and he ain't got long to live. And so it's kind of our final trip. And uh, we, uh, we want to follow the music. So we want to do the Ohio River music. We want to get to the Memphis sound. We want to get the Cajun sound and then the New Orleans sound. So the, the whole movie, as it progresses, the, the, the music will be changing depending on where we are. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. I would watch that. <laughs> that sounds very... Well, I, I, just about everybody I run into has got that on their bucket list. And so I think it's a movie that would sell. I really do. Yeah. Do you have any uh, other advice for people who want to be an actor or in the entertainment business? Uh, let's see. Fix your teeth. <laughs> get rid of your diphthongs. And understand that if you want to go to Hollywood, that's not where... They, they don't believe in acting out there. So don't try to be an actor out there. You know, you they, they want to know who you are and hire who you are. Some of the best acting I ever did was in the audition room. I'm not Mike Franks, but I walked into the audition room as Mike Franks and I played him. I did the same thing with D.B. Cooper. You know, that's not who I am. But, uh... But I, 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 I sold them on the idea that that's who I am, and that's why I got cast. Um, you know, in theater, we can go in in blue jeans and a sweatshirt and audition to play a guy in a tux. In Hollywood, if you play a guy in a tux, you better show up at the audition in a tux. <laughs> yeah. Because they, they ain't got no more vision than that. And they're looking to hire the guy. They're not looking to hire a guy who uh, is acting. And so, you know, people would say to me, you know, what's your dream role? And I'd say, I want to play a big, fat, black, lesbian attorney. And they say, where'd that come from? And I said, that's all the things Hollywood won't let me play. And I'm an actor. (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) I don't think I'll get that role to you. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, well, there's always hope. There's a chance. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, I mean, that's the truth. Uh, if you want to be an actor, you just stay on stage. Because uh, when you get out to Hollywood, it'll be one person. And I tried my best to be an actor in Hollywood. And when you look at the different stuff I did between, you know, things like A Christmas Snow and I Know What You Did Last Summer, those, those are entirely different guys. Mm -hmm. And so I've been able to pull off acting a little bit by fooling them, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it ultimately will hurt your ability to make money. The, the people that make the biggest money in Hollywood are, have one character and when they get a new job, new role, they just change occupations and they got a different life. That's all that's different. The performance is exactly the same. Then the audience gets to know them. They ask for them. Everybody likes that particular character. Then you make a whole lot of money. Now, if you go out there and do a really good character, and then the next role you do a really different character, you're confusing the audience. And then you're not well known enough to make the big money. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you want to be an actor, you're going to hurt your potential for making money. Yeah, now, I think I I'm pretty satisfied with what I did. I, I I've got a sad, I've got I'm very blessed. I did well enough to make a living, and so I'm um, I'm very blessed, and I feel really good about you know how much uh, uh, diversity I got into my roles. But uh, it was uh, it was quite a chore. Yeah. You have to be in the business uh, if because you have the passion for it. You have to enjoy what you do, and uh, you can't be in it for the money. Although the money is nice down the road, you know when you do the acting, but you can't yeah. uh, be in it for the money because I wouldn't find that very enjoyable. Yeah, just for that. Uh, and that's why we have agents, so that we don't even have to talk about the money. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know so uh, but it's uh, like I say I I feel so blessed I uh, feel so lucky I mean you know the best actors I ever met waited on me in restaurants in Hollywood <laughs> 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 and uh, and so because of that I feel very lucky and I'm very grateful for my fans and, uh, you know, uh, boy, I've got some rabid fans, and I'm just as grateful as I can be about them, uh, you know, because without them, I wouldn't have had that career. Yeah, you can't do it without the fans. No, oh, that's right. That's right. And uh, I owe them everything, you know. So, it's, uh... Yeah. Well, Mr. Watson, it's been a pleasure uh, talking to you and hearing about your career, and thank you very much for letting me interview you. It's been a pleasure. No problem, Trey, and uh, enjoy Louisiana. I wish I was down there, too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, uh, uh, that was my home, and uh, uh, I'll get to uh, celebrate that when I get that big boat down there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I can't wait to see that movie. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. I think it's going to be good. And we, we're funded. We've, we've sold it and it's funded, so it'll be moving pretty soon. Well, good. I can't wait to yeah. uh, see it. Thank you, Trey. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate the opportunity you give me to talk with you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Uh -huh. Have a good thank day. You. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. And that was actor Mr. Muse Watson, very uh, talented man and very uh, full of storytelling. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good rest of uh, your Friday. Well, I'll be with you a few more days. Uh, I hope you'll let me stay into your home throughout this spring break, because I will be doing interviews all that week. And I hope I can give you some happiness and joy throughout that time. And uh, God bless you all. 
Thank you very much, and thank you for listening.